Hey everybody, Dr. Rick here dropping in on you. Hope everybody is having a great start to your week. It has been a crazy start to the month. Uh, the, in the month for me and my peeps, uh, my team, uh, everybody. But it's been great. It's been rewarding. Uh, as I told you before, I'm sitting on a lot of things, keeping it real close to the vest because... Uh, I, I said this earlier, this, uh, I think last week or the weekend, man, I posted it and, and that you got to be careful what you put out there because not everybody that's getting it is going to be happy for you and cheer for you. You can draw a lot of negative energy, a lot of negative spiritual energy by broadcasting your projections before the deal is sealed. Uh, it's something that I've learned. It's something that I've definitely started practicing as of late. Um, when it happens, I'm going to tell you some things I'll share with you while I'm going through it. Other things like, for instance, my journey and weight loss. I, my goal was when I looked at my picture from visiting my daughter on her birthday in September of last year, I was 258 pounds. My goal was by the time I hit my birthday in July to have lost 40. I'm like four pounds off of that with a couple of weeks to go. Uh, obviously, I'm going to have some more to go. So I'm gonna count the year time on her birthday, which is the 18th of September. And I've taken people on that journey. I'm gonna do a reveal uh, photo shoot. It ain't gonna be no real photo shoot, but I'm gonna I'm shoot and share pictures of where I started and where I'm at uh, on my birthday. That's gonna be my birthday present to me, is to be able to see the work that I've put in and uh, how far I've come. Uh, that's great. Look, um, this, this this video is primarily for uh, my fam on the Black Voice. Uh, you guys haven't gotten a lot from me lately. I apologize, but what I have given, I'm hoping that it came with weight and it came with force. And you guys were able to take that and do something with it. Um, there's a lot going on. I'm, I'm bringing you guys a book this month. I'm working on that and I've got two going at the same time. But I'm bringing you a book this month. Uh, but I'm going to be doing some other things. Plus, I've got this thing going on where I'm working on myself. And this is a big time for my company. Uh, and, you know, I can't talk about it a whole lot, but it's a real big time for my company. And so I've been really focused on that. But let me tell you something. My heart is always in the black community. And I am continuing to work in the black community. I just don't have time to come talk about a lot of what's going on or what I'm doing or where my mind is right now. But one thing that I will tell you is we really and truly need to do a better job of protecting our women and our children. I know that seems like a fixed point for me, but what I'm looking at is I'm surveying uh, the landscape and I'm looking at things that stick out to me and being a man and having what I consider to be manly urging, urges, which is first and foremost to protect. Yes, to be a provider to provide but to protect that urge and I look around me and I don't see it at the level that I think it needs to be seen I think we can go all the way back uh, uh, you know 50 55 years ago almost 60 years ago when, uh, when, when brother Malcolm said that the black woman is the most unprotected uncovered uh, female on the planet and, 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 and we have not ventured from that and there are a lot of things out there. I am not one to ignore uh, truths. I'm not one to ignore someone's reality. I understand what we go through, black man. I'm a black man. I'm a black man out trying to empower black people and black men. So you can imagine the resistance that I get on a regular basis. You can imagine uh, the things I run into a lot of times from people I'm trying to help. But a lot of times the system doesn't want to see me win because if I win, a lot of you win. And one of the things that we have to deal with as black men is, someone said it, and, 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 and we can argue it and we can debate it, and, and, it, and it's not something that is something that I'm going to get into really debating right now, but it makes you think. Someone said that a black woman, I mean, no, nope, I take that back. Let me stop. It was, it was generalized. A woman is born with her value. A man has to create his. And you can argue that and you can look at it a bunch of different ways. I'm a, personally, I believe you, everybody's born with value. But when you sit down and think about it, how we view men, 
you got to build and get there. There's so much that's expected from men, and then we're expected to have mastered it at such an early age. The thing is, being a provider, being a protector, being a covering, being a leader are skills that come with experience, come with uh, knowledge, come with preparation, and there are so many things and gaps missing, and yet we're expecting men in their 20s and their 30s to be able to perform it, and it is something that developed. You look at wisdom, wisdom comes with age, which tells you there are things that are gonna be missing in your youth that need to be present if you're gonna be this phenomenal uh, ch dude checking off all these boxes. But every So what do we do? What do we do when we realize that it actually takes work and effort? Let me tell you something. I am classified as an expert in at least, in, in at least eight disciplines. It took me thousands of hours to get there. Thousands of hours of beating on my craft, studying other experts who had excelled at a level higher than me, reading, research, writing, evaluating, and I mean doing so much more that it's, it's, it's unbelievable what it took to get there. But yet we are demanding that Basically, young black males become experts at manhood and we don't have enough men modeling it. We don't have enough longevity. So what happens when you realize that in order to be what they really want you to be, it's gonna take years. It's gonna take years to become that. You gotta mature emotionally. That takes time. You cannot, uh, you can't feign uh, emotional development. It's happening. You can't fake it. You can't, you know, you can't sit up and pretend, you you know, people who understand what's going to, are going to see that you haven't developed and your decision making is going to show it. How you respond to things is going to show that you haven't developed. That's something that comes with time. Things that I'm dealing with now that are, people are looking up and going, how in the hell? I developed into the person that deals with the things the way I'm dealing with them now. This isn't the 20 year old who would definitely deal with it different. This isn't even the 35 year old who would have dealt with it differently. This is a person who has worked himself into a place where things that would have normally shook him does not, where things would have normally made him react instead of respond does not, and that takes time. So what happens? when you can't get there as quick as you want to. You pretend. You pretend you got it all together. You find, you hide everything underneath your strengths. You don't allow your weaknesses to be exposed because they're not exposed, you're never forced to deal with them. And you become inadequately equipped. That's something that we definitely are going to have to uh, come to grips with is that we've got a bunch of black males out there who are inadequately equipped but having and shouldering great demands. This is no excuse. I don't believe in excuses. I believe whatever needs to get done, you need to figure out how to get it done. Does it mean that there aren't things out there working against you? Absolutely not. I have things working against me every day. I have things that I have to deal with that I don't want to deal with. I have things happen to me that hurt me. I don't get a chance to fold over and whine and cry. I don't get a chance to quit. I don't get a chance to lay down. I have to look at it and say, you know what? I'm going to stand up. I'm going to square my shoulders. I'm not going to pretend I'm okay if I'm not, but I'm not going to allow not being okay to be the reason why I don't don't get the job done. But that again comes with a level of experience and expertise in handling life. So what do we need to do? We need to get it to where our men are prepared. One of the things that has to be at the forefront of that is protecting our women and our children. Far too many of them are dying. Far too many of them are abused. Far too many of them are left exposed. This cannot be our narrative. This cannot be how we're going to what can I say? Present ourselves. Because a lot of what we face in this world is because people see how we handle one another. They don't see the cohesiveness. They don't see the connectivity. They don't see the bond. They don't see the desire of men to put themselves at risk for the safety of of women and children. It's me and mine. If it's not mine, some of them not gonna even protect their own. 
But if it ain't me and mine, I ain't got nothing to do with that. That ain't on me, you know. I'll film it, and, and I may call 911, but, and I get it, you know. The thing is, some brothers who have tried to step up to help a female ended up getting hurt or killed. That's part of being a man, is the willingness to put yourself on the line for what you believe you should be doing. That is a strong indication of where you are at as a man. It was Dr. King says that a man that does not have something for which he is willing to die is not fit to live. What are you willing to die for? Well, number one is, I think our women and our children are valuable enough. I don't care what state they're in. I don't care what they're going through. I don't care how they're behaving. You know, uh, there are some women out there that are behaving in a way that I would definitely not want them in my company, but I'm not going to allow anything to happen to them. There are some women out there that move in a way that I definitely wouldn't want them to be my woman, but I'm not going to allow anything to happen to them. There has got to be a desire by black men to protect. That has to be a desire for black men to want to cover black women. There has to be a yearning on the inside of the black male soul to want to stand out front and not just declare that he's a king, that he is a leader, that he is a head, but to move in a way that is indicative of what he claims. It is a time for us to embrace the role of manhood in its totality. That is what, you know, I focus on when I'm teaching young black males when I'm mentoring young black males with black man lead, um, I got some that I'm working with directly that aren't just part of the program, that they're in my, in, 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 in my fold, in my circle. And the, and the thing is, what are you doing here? What are you doing there? But the bottom line is, how's the baby? How's the lady? How are we handling? What are we doing? And the, and the thing is, if we're honest, our women don't always make it easy to love them doesn't mean that we get a pass on loving them. No. It means that if you want to be the head, if you want to be the, the leader, if you want to be the one that is looked at as that dude, then there has to be a way you approach loving a woman, caring for your progeny, respecting women in general, outside of your pain and your feelings. You know, obviously anybody that has followed, is paying attention, knows that, you know, right now things aren't what I would like things to be with, with my wife. But I guarantee you ain't nobody better not touch her. I guarantee you all she, she got to do is pick up the phone. She, most of the stuff she don't even have to pick up the phone. It doesn't make me special. It makes me what we're supposed to be. It makes us, my whole thing is we got to get out of ourselves, male and female. We got to get outside of ourselves. We are so inclined into the idea of individualism that we, we've lost ourselves as a collective. And that's where our power lies. Everybody thinks about them. It's me, 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 me to the detriment of me and everybody around me because I can't do it by myself but I don't want to care about anything but me. That's not going to work. So what do we do? We're going to have to recalibrate our thinking. We're going to have to refocus on where we are. We're going to have to do something beyond what we're doing. We're going to have to find a way to love one another beyond the pain. That's a theme right now loving beyond the pain because it's easy to sit up and do something for someone or some people or somebody when everything is going the way you want to go. You're getting everything you want out of the deal. You know, when I show up in the community and everybody's, oh, oh yeah, Rick, Rick, you know, oh yeah, I'm getting a lot of energy for that, a lot of love from that, whatever. When I show up and, 
and all of a sudden, you know, I'm getting pushed back. Nobody don't want me around because they, uh, I'm challenging their ego or they, I'm challenging their situation, their position, and they're worried about losing whatever. And I got that pushback. I still got to have that love. Why? Because it's not about me. That's in personal relationships. That's in marriages. That's in collective community work. It's in every area. We are so caught up in me. I, I, I that we're losing valuable ground to those who know how to operate as a collective, even when they don't like each other. That's something to think about. Look, I'm going to get ready to get out of here. Oh, by the way, don't forget, we can always use, a, use your support. The way you support the work we do will be listed in the description box. On that note, I'm going to get ready to get out of here. Go ahead and sit down with my guys and chop it up about ways to be better. On that note, I'm out of here. You guys have a great day.